Hi everyone, this is uh, the finish of a class that I taught on painting a uh, columbine with a wet on wet background and I am currently removing the masking tape up from mine so that I can uh, continue with the painting demonstration. We did the wet on wet background earlier and I do have a video uh, of another columbine that just talks about how to do a wet on wet background and I will put the link above and the class will continue now. <laughs> so once you remove the masking fluid or the masking tape, this um, is the one that I just used the masking fluid on and I'm not going to take it all off but I'll get it, wow. That's one of the things I like about the um, Windsor Newton's mask is that when you go to take it off it's um, thick enough that it sticks together whereas like the PBO brand comes off in little pieces and it drives me crazy. And students that have taken from my class at home or with me before, I create a little masking fluid ball because then I can either use this to help remove mask or when I'm taking it off, it's a place to contain it rather than having it all around my table or on the floor. And if I'm doing mask and I want to clean my tool, I just pick it up and clean my tool Is on that it. what you were cleaning on it before? That big, my, huge, my bigger ball, ball. <laughs> My bigger ball is about this big. I did have one that was about this big and I finally oh threw it out. So, <laughs> And they get kind of gross looking, but my kids loved it when they were little because they'd come in and play with it. Yeah, they Because it bounces ball. and that's right. <laughs> um, okay, so once you've removed the mask, um, you probably can see, although it may not be real apparent up on the video, but uh, this edge is um, rough. And this other side is not too bad, but this side, this right side is rough. The tape is a little cleaner. I do have a few places where I didn't quite get the cut all the way through cleanly. And then I have a, a place where I didn't put the mask. I mean, I put the mask, I shouldn't have. Okay, so a couple different things that I do is I usually start with a flat brush and also, um, Oops. Come here. Um, in general, masked areas can look like they're cut out, like they're not part of the painting. Because this is one big shape, it's maybe not as prevalent as if you had a piece here and a piece here and, you know, some little things here and there. So generally what I do is I will go back and clean up the edges several ways. So one is I might come in with a flat brush and I usually start with my craft or, or these guys, the flat brushes that are, this is a Royal brand um, flat and it's a uh, two I think, no, it's washed, yeah it's a two. Uh, and you can get these like at Michael's. And uh, I will go in and let me show you on this one. If I can clean up the edge with the paint that's around it, I start there. Mm -hmm. And so also... You, yeah, pardon me, I, I'm looking at an angle. Uh -huh. You're trying to get the paint off the white? Um, yes, and oh, also oh. clean it up so it's straighter. Straighter, okay. Yes, Thank so you. in this case, I'm not necessarily trying to blur the edge. That might happen because I'm going up against the paint. And I'm starting, I always tend to work from the white side toward the color mm -hmm. because I don't <laughs> want to push the color into mm -hmm. my white. Okay. So I wet, I get my brush a little wet and then I just kind of go back and forth and then dab with the towel because oh. if you wake up the paint around there, you want to be ready to um, kind of pull it off and mm -hmm. um, make it neat. Now this is going to have color over it. So if a little bit of that blue and it is just a touch moving into that shape, okay. it's going to have color over it anyway. Um, so I would go kind of along there and do that. So I will pass this around so you can see where I've just adjusted that edge a little bit. And then there are times where I've taken mask off and whatever that thing is, I want it in the background. I don't want it to be the um, hard edge that it is. And so certain things, so maybe this part of the um, spur on this flower, I want in the background. And so I will go in there and just really kind of wake mm. up that edge and blur it. So if you have places on your mm. background that you didn't get a soft edge, you can, once it's dry, depending on the pigment, because if it's a staining pigment, it won't um, do this as easily, but you can soften those edges and blur them. Mm -hmm. 
So I've had things where in the water or the background of something where I wanted to keep that shape and I want maybe to put some color in it at some point or leave it white, but I blur it first. I soften those edges. And that's just done by, you know, waking up that edge a little bit more and letting it kind of be fuzzy. If you're using a color that's a little more staining, then I go to a brush that's got a stiffer bristle to it. And I don't like using bi wider, bigger flats. I like the little guys, even for bigger paintings. Um, so this, this one is one that I found at Miningers, and it's called a Fabric Flat by Dynasty. And it's, uh, this one's a number two, and it actually had a little too many bristles, so I just pulled some over and cut them off. Um, and then if you're using a color that was staining, um, then this one is, so you can hear it, is going to give you a little more pressure to really push against and lift the paint. Um, there are scrubber brushes out there, but they are really stiff. They are so, so strong and stiff that they, I stopped using them because they were tearing my paper. This one is a little like, it has bristles that are random sizes and I didn't care for that. And then, no, it's not this one. Um, I have a, another scrubber in here that was really um, round and flat or stiff and it was um, tearing my paper. So I will go and clean up edges. Now, say you have an edge where I do right here, I do over here, where I didn't quite get the paint where I wanted it. The first thing I try to do is use the paint that's near it to um, see if I can pull some of that pigment into the area without having to try to mix new paint. Sometimes that's just not possible where I don't think this is going to work. I mean, I can soften the paint that's around there and I'm just using a small <coughs> round brush for this to sort of wake up that edge and see if I can fill in, but it's just not going to go dark enough. So in that case, I have to go over and just know what I mixed and come as close as I can. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you make the mix a little darker, maybe it's not the exact color, but you can blur it out into the area around it using water. So I'm going to get just a little bit of New Gamboge and my Ultramarine, I've got too much New Gamboge in that. So, let's see if I can get it, okay. And I'm just going to dry that just a touch so it's not too wet. And then I will go ahead and Literally, you can just kind of touch your brush to the paper sometimes, and that's all it needs. You don't really have to stroke the color on. Mm -hmm. But if it's, maybe I didn't get the right value. Say I went too dark. Let's, I'm going to try to get it dark. Okay, got it really dark in there, and it's too dark. So then I can, one, I could take my brush and see if I can lift a little bit. Um, or you can take your brush and if you take water, and I'm going to put water farther out, I'm not touching the paint yet that I put on. Mm. So I'm giving the paint somewhere to go. And I'll show you why, because then once I get this water in there, then I can come up to the pigment and pull it down, and then it mm -hmm. blurs into the area around it. Mm -hmm. So as long as you put your water farther out than you maybe, so that you don't get a new hard edge, basically is what I'm trying to avoid. Um, and I did actually make a little mess there while I was messing with that. If I try to go in and clean that up right now, it's just going to keep pulling pigment into that. So I will let that dry. And it's like this one over here where my tape maybe wasn't down completely and I got just a little bit of color under it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to turn this around because then I can work from this angle. And I will use the flat and just take that's yeah just yeah. take a little bit of color and wake up that paint and so I'm I'm really it's just a little stroke and it's just kind of back and forth and then just dab with a paper towel now it's not completely gone if you were to zoom in on that area you would see there's just a teeny tiny touch of pigment in that area but it's not enough that it's going to be a big deal um, Anything else? Oh, so like right here where I came over the yeah. edge and it's um, broken. So these are all things, once I've pulled my mask off, that I go and take a few minutes, sometimes longer than a few minutes, depending on how much is masked or not, oh. um, <laughs> to clean up some of the areas. So can we go back and do that now? Yes. And then come back? Yes. Okay. Okay? Good.
<laughs> so when I am working on color, whether it's, it doesn't matter the subject, I tend to work from light to dark and I don't always finish an area before moving on to another area. So now that my background is in, it's a huge part of the paper that is gone that I don't have to think about. And now I can also base the colors that I am putting and the value that I'm putting on my flowers by what's around it. And so having that background out of the way um, makes it easier for me to make decisions on the other parts of my painting. And because I start in the light colors, I'm going to start with the white parts of these petals. And if you've never looked at a columbine up close, the spur of the petal actually is connected to this front white petal. It's a tube that runs, it becomes the front of the flower and the tube runs off into the back part. So it's all um, like one connection. It's really interesting. So I am going to get out um, a variety I will probably use my warm yellow again, my new gamboge, because um, the yellow that I'm seeing in the white parts of these petals is a warm-ish yellow. You could use Oriolan, you could use lemon, it won't hurt anything. And then there is a little bit of purple in there, partly because they're in shadow but also maybe because the transparency of those petals, you're seeing some of the color of the purple around it through that white. And it's amazing how much color can actually be, um, generally if I were at home, I might switch to cobalt for this. Um, actually, I think I will. Um, for the whiter part of the petal, cobalt is a more middle of the road blue. And um, I like just, the colors I can make with it. So I'm going to use cobalt and my Quin Rose again, and then some yellow here and there. So what I will be doing is I'm going to be working with a pick a petal, like right there. I'll, I'll you know like look at it closely to inform myself where it is, what I'm working with, and then um, I won't paint the one next to it. So I have to skip around. So generally with flowers, you have to. You know, do a petal, really? skip a petal, do a petal, skip a petal, so that you're not, unless you want to dry it between each petal, <coughs> you could do that as well. Um, and I am also at this point thinking value and color and not details. So I'm not at that stage of, uh, okay, I need to get in the veins or I need to do this little detail -y thing. Um, I am still just trying to get in a tone on the shapes. So I'm going to use my cobalt and a touch of the Quin Rose to make a purple, but I don't want it a vibrant purple necessarily, depending on where it's at. I do see some vibrant purple in there, but then I also see some more muted color. So I'm going to get just a touch of that yellow in part of that purple so that it becomes sort of a purpley gray. And then I will also make a little more vibrant. So that's pretty good right there. And um, I'm going to use a little bit, this is also the Quin Rose from earlier, a little bit of the Cobalt and the Quin Rose to make a more vibrant purple. So in the um, back part of this petal, there's some kind of yellowy gray. I know that's not a really good color term. That is kind of <laughs> yellowy gray, kind of right in here. And I'm going to come around, I'm painting around that yellow that is actually going to be kind of darker, but I'm going to paint around it for now because then I don't change the vibrancy because it's pretty strong. And I'm starting at the top of the shape and I'm moving that way and sort of down at the same time. Now I put in my purple and then as I'm coming down with it, there's a little bit of a brighter spot right here, so I'm going to put some water in there, and I might just leave it. I think there's a touch of pink right up there. And this is all stuff that as you work with watercolor and you observe a certain kind of image, whether it's a flower or a sky or a landscape, 
you start to see things <laughs> in a good way <laughs> um, that can give interest to a shape. And sometimes it's, it may not even really be there on your image, but you just know if you change it and give it a little more color change, then it makes it more interesting. And so you don't, on the petals, you're not wetting your paper first before you put your color down. Right. And you could, it, but there's really no need, no to, need to because I'm working fast enough and, and that's part of this. I want this to all feel like one mm -hmm. passage of color so I'm working quick enough that it's all going to be connected and I won't end up with lines. And then as I come down it was a little yellower so mm -hmm. I changed it. So this part of the petal right here at the top, there's a little, there's a line and then it's mostly white. That white, and I'm not going to touch where I just was because of um, it's got a little bit of a white edge. That white is going to be very important. So any place that you can keep something bright and white, um, it's better to um, err on the side of maybe keeping a little more white than you think you will need because the white will make everything else pop and it'll feel like it has strong light on it. So because I just painted that one, I can't do this one. So I'm going to go over here and do this one. This one has a nice deep dark um, right here in the center. Let me turn it around so you guys can see. See that really deep purple yeah. mm -hmm. right there? Mm -hmm. And then right here. Oh. Mm -hmm. So that purple is helping, that really dark purple down in there is helping make these yellow um, pieces feel bright and light. So we need to have those dark places in order to make the lighter things pop out. Now generally I may, you know, have, because I usually paint from lighter to darker, now is maybe not the time to put that in, but I want you guys um, to see it. There's nothing wrong with that. You just have to remember that there's a lighter um, stem that comes over it and I'm going to go around it. Whoops, forgot which blue I was using. All right, so I'm going to use the cobalt and the Quin Rose, and you can see because I got more cobalt out, I've made a darker value. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm going to grab just a little bit of my new gamboge to make it not as vibrant because it's, it's a shadow and plus I want the outside petals to be the brighter purple. All right, whoops. Okay, so with this smaller brush, this is a 10. I'm going to go back into that area. And by the way, I, I will put this video up on YouTube so that if anybody wants to see it later, you can. I'll try to send everyone the link. Okay, so I have that. And then as I come down, I'm just going around. This is where getting into the little detaily brushes is kind of nice to have smaller brushes. Um, as I come down, I'm still working on dry paper, and I'm going to go around that shape, and then as it changes, I'm using clear water because I need to add some yellow onto this other side. If you're like working on something and you think, okay, I just need to stop there, that's fine. It would let this dry and then come back to it, and then you could do this part. So this area up in here on this petal is a little yellower. And so I'm going to paint that in. Still using a little more muted color. Um, there is some of that purple back in here as well. Now if I don't want to get too bogged down into these guys because then this edge could be drying. So now I can take some clear water and I can blur that out and I could just leave it, but I see some purple. So I'm going to go in and add a little bit of purple. Now this is wet and wet now because I've put the water on there. So see how you can go back and forth between it being dry, add a little water, um, all of that. This line right there, my pencil line, is way too dark. Mm -hmm. So I need to lighten that, but I'm not going to lighten it right now. What you can do, and I'll let it dry, I actually do need to put a little more color right here. Um, 
once this is dry, then I can come in with one of those scrubber brushes, my, or my flats, I mean, with a little bit of water and I can um, just lift a little bit of that pencil. So if, if you use, and you need just a touch of water and you just come in there and just kind of go along that pencil line, <coughs> it'll usually lift it a little bit. It can blur the uh, lead, pencil lead, into the color around it a touch, so it may make it a little neutral. Um, okay, so I would keep going with that. Let me dry over here so you can see me do the purple petal and then I'll let you guys go back to work on yours. So I'm going to take the cobalt and, oh, actually I said I was going to use the ultramarine. So I'll use the ultramarine and the Quinn Rose um, to do this outside petal. And I've already got ultramarine out. So um, I'm going to start with the lightest color that's on this petal, which is a light purple. And I can just paint that light purple over the whole petal. And then I'll dry it. So wherever there's um, a light color, <coughs> when there's shadow over it, I always put that color over that area and put my shadow on top of that. So I'm not painting the shadow on white paper, basically. It's got color <coughs> under it. All right, so I am getting, and because I don't have um, water on the paper, I do <coughs> still need to make my value dark enough for as it dries, it won't be too light, but it's not going to go as light as we did earlier. All right, so I need to, I'm just trying to see if there's any, there is a lighter edge that I'm going to keep as white. So let me go, <coughs> I'm trying to not get too close to it so I don't get in the way of the camera. Um, right along that edge, if I can keep it light, light, like the light, the white is, mm -hmm. oh, Oh my gosh, the sunlight is hitting it, then um, that little thin edge right there will add to the feeling of sunlight. All right. And um, I tend to, on this kind of thing, I would rather be a little lighter and then have to do another layer mm -hmm. than have it too dark and wish I had it lighter. On this edge right here, there's a little bit of some highlight and um, I'm seeing just a little bit of warm color, maybe a touch of orange or, I don't know, I'd have to look at that again still. Um, okay. And generally when I am painting at home, I don't hit it with the blow dryer right away, but because I'm wanting you guys to see it, I will go ahead and do that. I would usually let this kind of lose some of the shine and then use the blow dryer if I'm gonna use it at all. So I have the first layer and that would be, that's where it's going to be except I need shadow in there. So the shadow that's on the edge up here is hard edged. This shadow right here is soft edged on the upper part of it. And so what would I need to do? Wet. Yes. So I'm going to paint the top one first because then that's out of my way and I won't be putting my hand in it. Um, so, and it, it actually has a little more red to that shadow. And it comes, I missed a little bit on the petal. Never mind, I'm going to see if I can put that in there. Okay. I just did what I said I don't do. <laughs> don't do what I show you. Okay. So that shadow comes down to right about here-ish, okay? And then that if that's not dark enough, I can go back into it, but for now it's fine. So when you see a shadow that has a soft edge, this kind of shadow is a, um, oh, what is it? Not a form shadow, it is a cast shadow. So it's probably cast from this petal mm -hmm. above it, and so those usually have hard edges, unless it is far away from something and then it might have a soft edge. This shadow right here is a uh, form shadow and so that is because it is rounding. We need to um, soften that upper edge in order for it to make it look like it's round. Okay. So I'm going to use a little bit of pigment and it's going to hit that water and 
If it's too wet, which I think it is, it's going to move too quickly. So I don't want it to go too high up there. So um, once you put your water on, you might want to give it a few seconds and then um, apply the paint. And then as I come down in this area, and this is not dark enough, I'm going to <coughs> have a hard edge. And then it comes over to here-ish. Okay. And then there's another hard edge shadow on the far side. Is that ultramarine again? Okay. Yes. Okay. And it, you know, if you looked really close at that um, shadow right there, it's got kind of a um, fuzzy edge to it, and it's probably because the petal itself has a little bit of texture to it. So you can put that in if you want, like I just kind of made this edge a little <coughs> random, or you can just put it in as a hard edge and not worry about it. It won't hurt anything. So then I would go around and I would actually start with the whites first, but if you need something to judge this by, like I need a little dark in there to tell if I got this dark enough or if it's too light, you could um, kind of go back and forth between them, it doesn't hurt. And then um, I would go around and do those main, the whites of the, cauli the cauliflower, <laughs> the <Yeah>. columbine. <laughs> And then, um, you know, depending on how you want to do it, if you need some value to to just see if your whites are good, um, you can go back and forth between the purple petals as, as well. I um, I can either show you one of the um, spurs now, or we can wait, and I'll have you guys come back, and I'll show you that in a little bit. You want to wait? Us now. Show you now. Well, wait. it seems like it's a similar wait. color. Okay. Is the only reason I'm saying that. So, well, I would I say I then it. let's let's <laughs> wait on those. Go ahead and work on these guys, and um, then we'll come back and I'll show you that because that you need a little bit of a rounding to it. Mm -hmm. So I'll show you what I do for that. So, okay. okay? The um, spur part of it starts a little um, more darker purple, and then as it comes down, it fades, and then it goes into white. I can't tell, if I noted it as a shadow, but there may be a part, if I'm remembering correctly, there may be a part of the petal, and we're not gonna worry about it, I'm just gonna make that a shadow. Mm -hmm. um, so the petal itself may have a little more form to it than what <laughs> I actually drew. But in the end, as long as it looks like a columbine, most people aren't going to go, well, you got that wrong, unless you're at the Botanic Gardens. Yeah. And then, <laughs> then they would help you. Then they would. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, so at the top of these spurs, they have a yellow, kind of golden look, um, where I don't know how it ends, but I'm going to use uh, Quin Gold. If you don't have Quin Gold, I would use 
um, maybe a warm yellow like New Gamboge with a touch, touch of your red, so Quin Rose or whatever, to make a, a gold or yellow from it. And um, actually, I'm going to put that on after I get the purple started because if I put the yellow first, it becomes the blur, the blur, the purple blurs into it. Uh, so I have ultramarine and some Quin Rose. And I'm going to add water to the spur before I start. So I'm going to take the water down the center. And then as I come farther down, I will move it out to the sides a little bit. And then I'm going to use water all the way because this is going to be white here. But I don't want, you know, I want to give it room for that paint to move if it decides it wants to keep flowing. And I'm going to dry the back of my brush. The top part of the petal or the spur is on, and that's probably a little big, that end. It's on dry paper. So this is all dry. And I want it to be a little darker back there. So I'm going to go get a little more color and just touching it to that wet area will release the color. And I'm also going to leave, if you have a steady hand, you can, if I, if I have a steady hand, I can leave a light edge mm -hmm. on that side. Now, it's not necessarily in the photo, but it will help um, give it the feeling like it's got sunlight on it. And then I just went into my water, cleaned my brush a little bit, and dried it, and now I'm just pulling that pigment that is still there down. And it's actually kind of a dry brush sort of effect because it's skipping over the surface of my paper because my brush is so dry that it gives it a little, um, little broken areas where there's just a touch of white in it. And so that goes now, it is a graduated um, shape where it's darker down to mid, down to light, down to white. That's really pretty. This piece right here is curled up. And because it's curled up, it is actually glowing at the bottom edge of that shape. So I'm going to turn this around and paint it upside down because it'll make it easier because the um, gravity will keep this upper edge lighter. Um, I'm trying to decide if it's hard or soft edged. I can't really tell. So I'm going to go ahead and put water on here. You could just paint this in, leave a light edge at this this piece where I'm putting the water right now. Uh, let's see, I need purple and a touch of the yellow because it's sort of a gray, gray purple. And then I'm going to bring that color right up to the line that separates um, two parts of the petal. You get just softening it just a touch more. Okay, so now it has, um, it needs something down in here to make this feel white. This part is not standing out because there is actually a shadow. And this, one of the things that I do as a realist painter is observation. And it is one of the biggest things that you can do because um, if you really just take your time to look at where the shadows are, where the lights are, where things are, are um, sitting next to each other, then it will help you determine where you want to lift or not. The other thing I realized is my, see how this feels a lot lighter than this? Mm -hmm. So I either need to push my dark darker or I need to lighten that. Mm -hmm. um, and if I wanted to lighten it, and that's round here, my scrubbers, here's one. Ah, no, that would be better. Because this is not a um, staining color, I can or should be able to just put a little water and a little pressure in there, and I can get that to uh, lighten and go a little lighter for me. So don't feel like once you have the color down that you can't pull some of it back. If you wanted to, over here, maybe, um, and this does feel a little highlighted right in there, 
that's not quite working, which it's not. You can also use a brush that's a little stiffer and you can lift um, a highlight here and there if you want to. So you have um, tools that will allow you to make those adjustments in their um, value. Let me dry this and then I'll put the shadow on it and I'll show you the center. Then I'll let you guys go paint. So the yellow center, I am I going to... Quick yes. the tip there? Oh yes, thank you. I forgot it. Um, so I'm just going to take... I will use my um, New Gamboge and my Warm Red just to make a warm kind of gold yellow. And my tip actually needs to be cleaned up, but I'm not going to take your time to do that. So I would round this out just a little bit. And But just putting a little bit of gold okay. on there is all you need. Yep. And I would do, again, I would do one spur, let it dry, then come back and do the other spur, and then do, you know, so you're not um, causing them to bleed together. The spur that is behind these three is dark. There's, um, it's, it's about this value um, purple that's back there, and then it has some shadow actually mm -hmm. in there. I think that's dry enough. I can go ahead and do that real quick. All right. So if I were going to do this one, I'm just going to paint it, and I actually want to put a little more red in the mix. Oops, don't do that. <laughs> And then I am going to leave again that upper edge with just a little line of highlight because I want to. And because no one is going to see my photo, they won't know. And then I'm just going to come in. Probably need to take more time on that edge, but that's okay. Um, so then I would let that dry completely and then there's some shadow that can go over it, but I want to show you this. So the center has uh, lots of little stems for the stamen that are overlapping. And to start it, I'm going to use a little bit of my new gamboge with a touch <coughs> of my blue. I don't want it to be green per se, but I want it to be not quite a that's not any yellow at all. Bless you. Thank you. So I'm going to just come in and I actually am going to leave just a few whites kind of right in there. And then as I come down this way, if you have Oriole and Yellow, this is where I'm actually going to switch yellows or Lemon Yellow would work as well because it's a little bit of a cooler um, yellow. And I, again, I'm putting the first pass on here. So I get that first pass, and I'm just looking at the yellow right now. I'm not looking at the fact that it has shadows or any of that. And I'm just getting in there. Let me dry it. And then I'm going to take uh, my, well, whatever it is. It starts to get really kind of messy and confusing. Um, I'm using uh, New Gamboge with a touch of my Ultramarine, but you could use the purple mix or um, whatever you feel is going to give you that color that works with your painting. And then I'm coming in and just picking out some shapes to make some of that lighter area come forward. And that's called negative painting. What is it called? Negative painting. Oh, negative painting. All right. Yes. Didn't so you. yeah, by putting in the darker value, those lighter values start to come forward. And I need uh, kind of a grayy purple again down in here, kind of on that edge to make that edge push back. Okay. Is that a number six brush? About? This is a 10. This is, is a 10. Wow. Yeah. It kind of depends on your brand because mm -hmm. some brands, numbers, it's like women's clothing, you know? Mm -hmm. You can't go in <laughs> right. and buy right. a certain size. So yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so then I grabbed a little bit of that neutral purple on my brush because in some of those areas, 
you can put a little deeper shadow and um, it starts to give you that feeling that there's lots of layers of stems right there. And then the last part of this is New Gamboge. If you do not have New Gamboge, I would get a yellow out and a red and make a warm yellow like this. And then the, the New Gamboge, you can pretty much just start painting it on in its intense value. And that, yeah, that pops it. Um, so that vibrant color in contrast to the purple can really make it um, sing, basically. Um, some of those will need a little bit of shadow, but you don't have to put a lot on them. And I will dry it so you can see that. Now up here at this top part, there some of these are so intense that the sun, where the sunlight's hitting them, that um, they look white. So I'm going to put just a little bit of an edge on a few of them, maybe a mark here and there, and maybe some marks behind them. But that would be something that if you wanted to mask after you had pulled off um, the other mask, you could go and remask this really highlighted area so that you don't have to think about painting around it. And I'm just kind of making this up right now, the marks that I'm putting on. Okay, let me put it there. So that highlighted area, all of this is a little stronger can really um, make it feel like it's got sunlight on it. A few of these up in this area are not quite as strong as back here, so I just used a little water to lighten the color I was putting on. And I can come back and if it's lighter, it's, you know, I would rather it be a little lighter than too intense where I can't um, easily make an adjustment. And then some of these guys, again, are a little lighter. I'll try to put this all in in one pass. Okay, so I'm going to make these lighter than what these are. And then I can come back after I dry it right quick and show you the next layer. Okay, let me done. Would you leave any of that white? Um, yes, I'm going to leave right there okay. white. Mm -hmm. So That's let pretty. me get this dry. Um, ones that are down in here, actually they're kind of not really green. They're a little orangier shadow that's in here. So just a touch of orange on a, one area of them can give it a little, uh, make it feel like it's a little more 3D. There are a few that have, it feels like a little purple. Now this again is what I'm seeing. You may not see all of this, partly because as you train your eye to look at a certain subject, you will see things differently than what everybody else sees. And so it's more um, just coming in and seeing if there's some kind of a value change or a color change. And also we don't all see color the same. We, we have a, a little variety in what our eyes see. So you just tell your next teacher if it's not working, hey, that's the way I'm seeing that color, okay? <laughs> right. You can tell them you have cataracts, which... Exactly, and that totally changes. <laughs> which oh, I yeah. have. Yeah, which I, I think yeah. I have one starting, so... Yeah. So all of what, no. <laughs> all of what I told you is no. <laughs> um, okay, so I am coming in and I'm just putting some shadow on the left side mostly because the uh, so far my light is coming that direction. And I also want to use a little bit of Oriolan kind of up in here. And I'm just going over that whole section because there's a little more yellow. It feels like right up that top area and it's a little um, whiter down right in there where the light's hitting it. And these guys, I'm actually going to put just a teeny tiny touch of Oriolan um, in a few of them. 
okay? So it is about going back and forth and these guys may not be completely done yet, but I've got some good layering happening in them. Same thing with the petals. I still need to go back and add layers and keep going with it. So I will let you guys go back and um, if you have questions, I'll come around. Okay, so I'm now back in my studio after the one day class was done and I am going to finish up the Columbine painting and I told the students that I would send out the video so that they could uh, see how I finish my painting and it is basically the same thing that I did uh, during the class to show them how I work with layers and uh, mixing of color and looking at the different values so I am going back right now and adding some more color to a few places where I see some darker values and then I noticed that I uh, missed a little bit in the background right in that area where I uh, had masked instead of leaving it open to get some background color in it and then I am just starting to go around and work on the different petals that I already have some color on and so I'm using cobalt and quinacridone rose uh, for a purple and I am darkening the value of that petal and it's always a matter for me when I'm working on flower petals of judging the values and seeing whether or not I need to lighten or darken an area as I mentioned during the class so I'm putting in the shadow on this petal and then I will uh, judge it later whether or not it has dried uh, if I need to add any more to it. I will sometimes also use clear water to blur an edge and I believe I did that on the bottom part of that petal. And I have sped up this part of the video because it took me about four and a half hours um, to finish the uh, painting after I had worked on it in class. I decided to add some masking fluid to uh, one part of the stamen that are in the lower flower because there, it was just going to make it a little easier and also in that spot right there on the upper flower there is a stamen that uh, extends down over the uh, purple petal of the lower flower and I did paint around the stamen of the upper uh, flower but the lower flower there uh, are some uh, darker petals around the stamen area and I figured it would just be easier if I masked it so that I didn't have to uh, use a smaller brush and, and paint as carefully around them. So I, I painted the uh, masking fluid on and then that has to dry and while that's drying I go to work on the spurs on the upper flower. So I'm adding some water there on the edges and then I used my cobalt and quin rose mix to put some color down the uh, center of that uh, spur. And now I'm going back to that petal on the right and I am adding the darkest shadow area on there and I'm using a mix between a cooler purple to a uh, or bluer purple to a warmer uh, purple with a little more red in it and then in a few places I used clear water to soften the edge so that it would feel like it's rolling around the petal and then after looking at this uh, petal on the left I decided that it could use a little more value so I added a little more to that area and now I'm going back into the uh, petal that is the white part of the petal and increasing the shadow there and I forgot that I had used ultramarine blue and my Quinn Rose uh, while I was teaching the class and I just had started using the cobalt and they work together pretty well so it didn't hurt anything to uh, change to the uh, cobalt instead of using the ultramarine blue and Quinn Rose for the purple parts and I painted in a spur on that one and then the petal that is on this lower 
Columbine, I made it slightly bluer than the uh, petal behind it from the upper Columbine. So the upper Columbine has uh, just a little bit of a, a pe purple petal that is peeking out behind that one petal and it for me I made mine a little warmer. This petal is interesting because it had some um, color changes and some hard and soft edges so I'm always looking for those things so I painted in the uh, lightest color and then I will have to come back and and add some to that. So same thing here I'm painting in the lightest color and then as it comes down it has some quite bright light on it so I left some of that area and just used some clear water so that it would uh, have a uh, sunlit feel to it. And I am changing from working uh, the upper flower. The upper flower I did the white petals first and uh, for this one I decided to go with the uh, the outside petals, the purple part of it first because there's a lot of white on the interior petals and uh, so I wanted that darker color to be there so that I could see where those white petals are and then also just judge whether or not I needed to put any uh, value on the white petals. And for this petal I decided that the lightest areas weren't quite light enough so I used a little bit of water and lifted some of that color back. And I'm getting some more cobalt out. And then I uh, go to work on the spur at the back of, of that upper flower. So it's the same thing that I was doing in the class where I am working on one area and then I move to a different area and uh, let that, that other area dry before I paint a petal or a shape next to the wet shape. And now I'm adding some of the darker values on that upper area and I put a few shadows in and I will dry it so that I can work on the next section. Putting a little more shadow on the left side of that spur helps uh, give it a rounded feel and I, did, I just painted that on dry. It seemed to have a little bit of a harder edge. And then there was also a uh, shadow between that spur and the spur that was in front of it. So I made that a darker shape there. I decided to go back into the center of the flower to push those values a little more. So I'm looking for any dark areas that I can add to with the, um, it's a mix that's kind of a muted uh, purple. So the cobalt and quin rose and a touch of the um, yellow, the new gamboge in it. And then on some of the edges of the uh, darker new gamboge um, stamen, I added uh, some more shadow to them with, uh, I think I used the New Gamboge and Quinn Rose mix to go a little darker orange on a few of those edges. And then I went in and added the little yellow gold tip to all the different spurs. Just cleaning up an edge there. Same thing here, I think I noticed a, an edge that wasn't real clean and so I decided to go in and clean it. This is usually something I try to do right after I have removed the masking fluid and I just missed that one. And then I'm adding a little more value to the bottom edge of that spur so that it will feel more rounded. So using a little more of the cobalt and quin rose. So the uh, back petal here needed more color on this bottom flower and uh, it has just a teeny tiny uh, bit of yellow on the uh, tip of it so I added that just so that it would have a little bit of color change. And then I started into uh, that petal that has some shadows and has some curves to it and I'm using uh, some darker color in some places and then a little bit of water to soften edges here and there. And if you go to soften an edge, you can either let it dry completely and then come back and soften the edge, or if you're going to dry it right after you've applied the paint, it's better to let the paint sit for a few seconds so that it's not too wet and then use some water to soften the edge. So I got out a little more cobalt and I mixed it with the 
quinacridone rose to make a pretty vibrant purple for that shadow that was on the uh, lower left petal there. And I painted it on with hard edges and then I used a little bit of water to soften a couple of the edges where they felt a little softer. And I'm starting to see the values where I can just go in and place the darker color on right away and then I'm not having to go back and add layers. So there comes a point where I've got enough color and value on a painting where I can start placing the color in pretty strong. So this petal had some hard and soft edges so I'm using some clear water in a couple places to soften them and a little bit of texture with some, some lines on it. And then there is a lighter uh, area on this petal that I lifted after the petal had dried so that I could have that line. I realized when I was working on that lower petal on the left there that I had used the shadow on the purple petal um, and also it connected with the uh, shadow that was over the spur at the back and I separated that a little bit with a, a different value there where I lifted some of the color. And right now I'm adding just a little more value on that section into the uh, mid part of that value on that petal. And just a little more color in a few places on that one. And then I saw an area that it needed to be cleaned up with just a little bit of water and my scrubber brush. So that's what all of that was. Going in a little more value in those areas. Uh, your watercolor will dry 20 to 30 percent lighter than how you put it on. So uh, generally if it's not quite dark enough it's because um, I will put it on and then I have to um, judge it by what's around it and because it does dry lighter then I have to uh, add layers which I'm okay with. I would rather go a little slower and add layers than have to try to lift color back out if it's too dark. So adding color to the different spurs getting that first layer on and then I start working on the whiter part of these petals. And there is a um, upper shadow on this one and then there are uh, darker parts to these white petals because of how we're seeing them they're facing us a little bit more and so we see the uh, opening that causes a deeper shadow and I'm putting in the lighter parts of these petals to start. I'm also placing on that one there the shadows that are being uh, cast onto the white part of the petal from the stamen and so that uh, petal has some unusual unusual shadow uh, shapes on it and then I'm drying it. So I'm going back to this petal and softening a few of the edges um, I believe Maybe my shadow in there just had a few edges that were a little harder than I wanted them to be. So a little bit of water and my uh, scrubber brush. And then I uh, had used some masking tape. Oh, I believe I had a, a pencil line. That's what it was. So my pencil line on that petal was a little dark. So I had gone in with my scrubber brush to soften that area just a little bit. And it... Um, lifted the pencil line a little more and then I realized that one of the other petals the uh, pencil line was a little too dark and so I used some masking tape to uh, set on there to lift but it also lifted my masking fluid that I had uh, painted on the spurs earlier so I had to remask those few spurs so if you're ever working with masking fluid you want to make sure you're not placing masking tape next to it because it can lift the masking fluid. So now I'm painting the lighter part of the shadow that is on those white petals and I'm also just painting it right under 
the darker area that will go on there. So you could just paint the darker area in, let that dry, and then come paint the lighter area. But again, I tend to work light to dark, and so I just painted the light area under that shadow. And now I'm starting the darker part of the shadow on that upper petal, and I also darkened the upper shadow because it wasn't quite dark enough and softened a little bit of that lower um, shadow edge because it does blur up into the petal just a little bit. So anytime I can use a little bit of clear water to soften an edge, I will. And I'm going to dry it and I'll be right back. Okay, so now that I've dried that area, I am coming back with a darker version of Cobalt and the Quin Rose and I'm varying it a little bit within that shape so that it's a little bluer in some places and a slightly redder purple in other places. Same thing with that one. I'm starting with the mid value and getting in that um, kind of mid value shadow or opening in that flower. And then on the uh, third petal or fourth petal, I guess, I'm going in with my darker color and I'm using the a little bit of the new gamboge yellow with my purple mix to neutralize it just a little bit. Going back up to that petal to add a little more to the shadow and now I'm painting on some of that shadow color in a few places on that petal and then I will dry it. So whenever I use a dryer when I'm uh, painting in my studio, I will give the color a little bit of time to dry uh, so that it's not too shiny before I start to dry it. Um, you can't see that in this video because I've sped it up, but I am uh, letting it dry so that it's not shiny before I uh, start to dry it with the dryer because the dryer can actually kind of flatten the color a little bit. It doesn't give the paint time to sort of set down into the uh, watercolor paper and uh, mix and do whatever it's going to do um, so that uh, giving it some time to get a little flatter before you dry it can be can help um, keep it from flattening when you use a, a blow dryer. Right now I am using cobalt and some Quin Rose to make that shadow on the upper white petal uh, a lot darker so it's now a, a mid value and it will um, make it make the uh, petal feel like it's got some pretty dark shadow on it. And then I need to go back in and darken the center of this petal. And so as I continue to darken that area, it will start to make it feel like it's uh, two dimensional with that opening of the petal in the back. Same thing for this one. And now everything is dry and I have uh, removed the masking fluid on the stamen. After removing the masking fluid, I am going around and adding a little more shadow to a couple places where my masking fluid wasn't uh, completely straight or thin enough. And so I needed to uh, fix those shadows just a little bit. Now I'm using uh, my cobalt, the new gamboge, to make a little bit of a sort of a green but it's pretty it's on the blue side of green and then um, adding just a touch of the Quin Rose to make it a little more neutral so pretty much these flowers are painted with those three colors and a little um, addition of the Oriolan yellow or the Hansa or lemon yellow in uh, some of the stamen stem area so I'm adding the new gamboge to those stamen on the um, rounder part of the stamen and then I went back to work on the uh, spur that was at the back of that petal and adding the little yellow end to those spurs and then I found a couple places in the background where I wanted to darken or clean up so I used the ultramarine and some of the new gamboge mix that I had on my palette there to uh, clean that up and drying it right quick and then I'm darkening the um, spur one of the ways that you can help yourself decide if something is 
dark enough or light enough is if you take a piece of paper, a thin strip of paper, and put a hole punch in uh, two ends of the paper opposite of each other. So the paper might be four or five inches long, and then you put a hole punch in each end. And if you take your um, photograph that you're working from and you put one of the holes over one part of, or the part of the photograph that you're working on, so say a purple petal, and you place that other opening on your painting on that same purple petal and see if the color is generally the same or if the values are generally the same or if you need to lighten or darken an area. That can help you if you're kind of struggling to see if it's working. Um, I don't always push my uh, values as dark as my photograph because uh, some photographs will uh, be too dark. Actually, a majority of photographs are a little too dark in the darker parts of the um, photo. So, But I'm using it as a guide to give myself an idea of if things need to be adjusted. Because color can distort what we're seeing. And something that is a very vibrant color can make you think that it's darker than it is. So it's um, helpful to look at it that way. So I continued to make some additional layers and adjustments in those areas as I was just talking there and now I'm adding some more value and some lines to the center and I'm that's where I go in to use the cooler yellow I believe I, I pulled out um, Oriole and yellow to uh, add some of that um, kind of almost greeny or yellow to parts of the um, stems for the stamen but I also want to keep some white areas in there because it is a lighter area to the flower and it might even have some sunlight on it. Going around and adding some more and I also did keep some white, some pure white on a few of those stamen on that flower as well because I wanted it to feel like the sun was hitting it and that it was just really vibrant um, and very lit right there right in those areas. And I do not know if it was on the photograph that way, but I just decided that I wanted to add that, um, that white highlight just by leaving the white of the paper. And I don't use um, anything to uh, paint white on top of my paintings. So I went back in right there and added a shadow to some of those spurs. And those uh, little marks, those shadow marks can make it feel, uh, that shape feel like it's got some dimension to it. Um, and I also made sure that I rounded the edges of them just a little bit as they were going over the spur. I didn't want it to um, be too straight and flat. And that will also help with making it feel dimensional. I did add a little bit more value in the upper center area of that upper flower. And then I'm cleaning up that edge because it was just a little messy right there. So usually when I'm working on a painting I will try to put color or the first layer of color on uh, lots of different parts of the painting. So the only part that I haven't added any paint to yet would be the stems and leaves on the left side of the painting. And uh, for that partly uh, I did not because once you get going in um, certain color mixes and things, it's kind of nice just to keep working with them. So, And I got interested in painting the flowers themselves, so I just kept going on that. Um, and then the other thing that I'm looking at as I'm working on these flowers is my background and whether or not I need to make any adjustments to that. So um, that's always something to consider is how is everything working together and I will dry this area and be right back. Still making some adjustments here and there. I decided I wanted that background petal of the upper flower to be a little darker and just a little uh, more on the red purple side so that it would separate from the purple petal that's in front of it. And then I'm going to dry this area So I cleaned off the masking fluid on that little tiny tip of the uh, stamen from the upper flower that was over the pur purple petal and added the uh, yellow in there. And now I'm going to start, um, I decided the uh, stem on that, su on that bottom one there was just a little too wide and not quite as 
clean as I wanted it to be. So I mixed up some of the ultramarine and new gamboge, um, the darker mix for the background, and put some color next to that stem to straighten it out or curve it just a little bit so it wouldn't, uh, basically your stem should go a little wider at the bottom and a little narrower at the top and I was adjusting that and same on some of these other stems. So before I started working on them I'm just cleaning the edges up just a little bit. And then same as I showed during the class if you have placed some color next to an area and if it's not quite blending in just use a little bit of clear water to blur it out into the area around that color. And then I added some of the shadows to that lower spur there and I'm adjusting the value on that spur just a little bit. It's a little uh, redder purple than the um, petal, the purple petal that's in front of it. I'm getting out some new gambo excuse me, new gamboge and some cobalt. And then I cleaned just a little area and I pulled out some burnt sienna and I started to paint this area up here a tan and then realized later that I had painted the wrong area that I needed to put it lower. And because it was a light enough value, it didn't matter because I could put the green that actually should be up there um, over that tan. And now I'm coming down the stem itself and I'm leaving a light edge on the uh, right side so that it looks like it's hit with sunlight. I did adjust that edge later, but for now I left it. And I'm just using a mix of the new gamboge and the cobalt to come down that stem. And I'm varying it so it's a little cooler in some places, a little warmer in others so that there's some variety within that shape. Same thing here, coming down the stem, new gamboge and cobalt. And that one, because it's mostly in shadow, I did not leave a lighter edge on it. And the uh, stems on the uh, columbine flowers are long and thin. They're, it seems like they wouldn't be able to hold up the flower, but the flower is so light and dainty that um, it is a uh, difference in the size of the stem and the, the flower head that's kind of noticeable. So I did go back and then uh, used some, uh, I believe I used Oriolan with cobalt for the upper parts of these buds. Um, I think the one on the left that I'm working on right now is after the flower is gone off of the stem there and so it's uh, kind of a fun funny shape that it creates once the flower has dropped off and it's a little more um, lime green looking. And I'm going to dry this and I will return. I decided for the background, speaking of background and adjusting it, that, that the shapes on the upper left that were lighter were just a little too strong and pulling my attention. And then I also wanted to add a little more yellow in the background, so I put a little more new gamboge in a couple of those um, openings just so that it would help um, bring that yellow from the flower stamens back into the background a little more. And then I used my background color, the ultramarine and new gamboge, to go clean up around the uh, leftover bud um, part of that flower. And just using a little darker value here and there. And that darker value right in that area will help make it feel like it's uh, rounded. So. And then I went back over the left side of the stems to darken on the shadow side in, in that area. Just cleaning up that edge again. Didn't quite get it as neat as I wanted to. And I also think I'm darkening the value around that area just a little bit so that that uh, stem um, part will stand out a little more.
I added just a little more of the, the purpley blue to the background, so I'm still looking at it. Again, it's one of those things of working it up slowly, so I can always decide to go darker. And I got out some Oriolan and Cobalt, and I just placed that over the whole leaf area and varied it a little bit here and there. The Oriolan yellow is a little cooler yellow, so it's going to have a little bit of a different green look but not be too um, vibrant. So I wanted it to still work with the rest of the painting. And I also used that mix, the, um, or not that mix, I used the yellow in the centers of my uh, columbines and I used the mix um, of the cobalt and oriolan in the upper part of those uh, stems. Okay, so now I have color almost everywhere and it um, helps me to judge again how it's working and I decided that the background still wasn't dark enough so I added a little more of a kind of a purpley blue to that upper left corner and then I went back in and now I'm using my burnt sienna and a touch of my new gamboge and um, I think a little bit of my cobalt in that mix to make sort of a tan um, color for the papery area of those um, stems those dried up areas of the stems. And then I went back and I'm cleaning up the edges around the uh, leaf. And the big thing here is that I'm going to need to be able to separate the stems from that leaf. So right now they're pretty close in value. So I'm going back to the left side of the stems and I am darkening those edges. And right there you could see me putting some darker value and that helps bring that stem out in front of the leaf that's in the lower corner. Same thing for this one, I'm darkening the shadowed side. And then those have to dry. Then I decided after looking at the values down on the leaf that I had painted that I wanted to have parts of it feel lighter so I went back with my round brush and some water and just softened and lightened some of those areas and the um, pigment that I was using, the cobalt and oriole and yellow, those are not staining so it was easy to lift that back and that way I had some value changes within the pedal and didn't have to do a whole lot to create it so um, I could have painted everything lighter first and then come back and added a darker value when I first did that did those leaves but it worked just to lift the color back off as well and because I didn't want a whole lot of detail in that area uh, it was fine for me at that point I think I did add a little a few dark lines later but nothing really major and just going back in and adjusting some of the um, edges on some of those earlier parts just so that they would have some value changes and then I believe I went and used some water and my flat brush oh it may, may be a little later I was going to say I went and lifted some uh, light uh, along those stems here we go so I decided that I wanted to have that be a little lighter on the edge and so I went in with my scrubber brush and some water and just went down the stem and lightened um, some of those areas. A little more value. So now after you've got color everywhere now is the time to start looking at everything and decide if you need to make any adjustments. Okay, I'm going back and adding or lifting a lighter edge again on those stems. I decided that I wanted that. And I also made sure that if part of the stem was in shadow because of the spur that was near it, that I did not lift uh, a light area in those areas. And some of it is just guesswork. 
And then I decided right here that I wanted to um, lighten just a little bit on both the spur and the stem of the, gr the green stem that was there in order to help separate it from the background. So sometimes it's because you can definitely see the light on an object or sometimes it's to separate those values in order to make one part um, come forward and another go back. So the lighter value will come forward. And then I'm drying it all and just adding a little bit of a darker few lines in the leaves and deciding if that was enough. Uh, I added a little more value to the uh, stem that was there. Still using the cobalt and new gamboge to do that. And then I removed the masking fluid that I had on my name. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but in the class I signed it with the PBO masking pen and I uh, added just a little bit of cobalt to it. And that's it.